All right, I bought uh, this on eBay um, just for fun. I don't have any really use for it. I thought maybe I would put it in my uh, new, I have a shed in the back that I've turned into a solar shed. I put a 50 watt panel and the battery and then I have uh, lighting now in my shed. Uh, maybe I'll show a video of that sometime. Um, and it might be nice to have a sensor that turns everything on, but that would require consuming some electricity to run the sensor, so I'm not sure I want to do that. But uh, anyhow, uh, this is an, an IR sensor. Uh, it has a dome lens uh, that's uh, kind of a fly's eye lens. It has individual LEDs that look in different directions. Um, and this little circuit on the back. And um, so I thought, ah, finally get around to turning it on, playing with it. And uh, this nice three pin connector here. So it's probably power ground and output. And they're not marked. <laughs> There's no silk screen at all on this thing. So uh, uh, I thought maybe uh, other people would have had the same problem. So. Let me describe to you how I figured out uh, which pin went where. Um, there were a couple capacitors, and I looked at the uh, ground side of these two capacitors. These uh, uh, 47 microfarads and a uh, 22 microfarad. And both of the grounds on these two uh, capacitors were connected together. So I figured, ah, that must be ground. Uh, so. Um, I used the continuity checker on my voltmeter and figured out that those grounds went to, uh, let me find something to point with here, uh, they went to this pin here, alright? Um, so there's a small little resistor on this side, there's a diode on this side, so the one that's next to the resistor on the IC, that's the ground connection, alright? And then I figured, well, um, diode and here's something that looks like a voltage regulator, so power might be on this pin. So I check for continuity between this pin and this diode. So yes, indeed, these two are connected. So the power goes through a diode and then into this regulator. And uh, examining that regulator with magnifying glass, I noticed a part number on it. I think it's 7133, and I figured the 33 is 3.3 uh, volts. And so uh, probably 5 volts in, 3.3 volts out with a diode drop there in between and uh, yes indeed that's what that's how it figured out so I figured ah well the center then must be the output and it must swing uh, 0 to 3.3 to so let's let's hook it up and see if we can get it to work uh, so first of all we'll hook power up so this is the the ground connection on that lead let's see here let's, let's kind of put this in here we'll cook power on over here uh, so now we have power going. Uh, we need some way of monitoring the output. And uh, I'll show you my latest toy, which I bought at the swap meet. Um, let's figure it to pan up a bit. Oh gosh, that's going to be looking right into the light so you can't see it. There, that's better. All right. I like that. Um, so I know other people have made videos about how analog voltmeters, nobody uses those anymore, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, um, I used to have one of these uh, triplet voltmeters a long time ago. I loved it. I thought it was just great. Um, and I sold it. And I sold it for okay money. Uh, but I kind of wished I hadn't have sold it. I, I really like these little things. Um, so I was at the swap meet the other day, and some guy had one. In fact, this is a fancier one than I had. This one has the uh, uh, sealed switch. So the, the switch that, that changes uh, the function and range uh, is open on some of them. You can get water into them or dust into them or whatever. Uh, this one actually has a sealed unit, um, which is nice. So this is a Model 310C. Um, it also has a switch on the side that reduces polarity, so you hook it up to a circuit and if it's backwards you just flip the switch and it swaps plus and minus, so that's also nice. Um, I have it set here to 3 volts. It, it'll peg it a little bit, but um, we will set the ground of the meter to the same ground as our power supply and we'll hook up the plus side of the meter to the center pin uh, that we are using. And uh, now we can watch the meter. And uh, it's going to sit there low, but if I... Oh, 
get my hand nearby, it mo saw that motion and, and it went high. Um, there we go, went high again. Um, I just find the analog meter in this particular usage much, much, much better than an analog meter. Um, you see a movement, it catches uh, your, your attention, you see it out the corner of your eye, all you're really looking for is a one or a zero. Um, I, I think in this particular instance, analog meters are just great. Also, I think analog meters are good if you see any, uh, uh, if you're looking for a power supply, if the power supply is clean or if there's a ripple on it. It's nice to see that, that meter, maybe say it goes up to five volts, but then, but then is wiggling. And you know that the wiggling is due to the um, uh, power supply ripples. So I think in those two instances, I, I prefer, prefer a, uh, an analog meter. And uh, this meter is just too cute. Um, it, is, it is pretty small. You can see my hand here. It is, it's a tiny, tiny little meter. And the triplet meters are, are my favorite. Uh, by, by far, the, the, my favorite analog uh, meters are, are the triplet designs. Um, in a second, I'll show you another analog meter that I have that's, uh, that's quite interesting. Um, kind of the granddaddy of uh, triplet meters. But anyway, um, this seems to be working great. There's two, uh, two knobs. I'm sure one knob is sensitivity and one knob is uh, delay time uh, to hold, hold it and reset. So there's also a switch on it. This is high-low, so I imagine you can change the state so it goes high or instead of going low. Um, so it, it's a pretty self-evident little, little circuit. Um, and uh, the form factor is okay. It does give you t two tiny little holes for mounting. It would be nice if those were a little bit bigger. Um, but there are there are two there are two holes um, two holes for mounting. Um, it is uh, a little large. Um, let's see. It's about. Uh, about one inch thick uh, from parts to dome. Uh, the dome itself is about uh, just a tiny bit over half an inch, right about a half an inch. Um, and then the board is about an inch and a quarter by a little less than one. Uh, so nice, nice little, uh, nice little sensor. Let's take a look at that other meter since I brought it up. Um, I bought... Uh, did I buy this meter? No. I bought this meter. It came a part of a palette of things that I bought. So it kind of came along for the ride. I think it caught my eye. So it's one of the reasons I bid on the palette. But wasn't wasn't the main reason that I, uh, that I purchased it. Oops, sorry for the camera work here. It is. Let me change how we're seeing things. I don't have a uh, a video tripod to do these things, but uh, you can see that. Uh, this is a triplet um, 630, and I think this is one of the nicest meters they ever made. Um, it's very, uh, very, very large. It's uh, you know about eight inches by six inches. Um, very nice meter. Uh, lots of people have torn these apart. To, if you can see inside of them, I think uh, uh, Dave over at EEV Blog uh, ripped one of these open. They're just beautiful inside. They're very, very nice. Um, the thing that caught me eye on this meter wasn't the meter itself, although it's in perfect shape. A lot of times the the Bakelite is cracked on these things. They're dropped. Uh, but this one's in perfect, perfect shape. It was actually this uh, tag here. A lot of times when you buy equipment, uh, especially at auctions and stuff, um, they'll have some type of inventory control tag. A lot of times the instruments are um, a capital equipment and they need to uh, survey them every year, account for them and stuff, and depreciate them and things like that. Um, this particular meter uh, has one of those tags on it, so one of those tags that you really can't take off easily. And the, the, I actually didn't realize what this tag was, and I started to try to peel it off, and I noticed I couldn't. And in the act of trying to peel it off, I went, oh, wait a minute, 
oh, wait a minute, I don't want to peel it off. I want that tag. Um, so, let's see if we can zoom in here. It is a controlled item. Um, it has a serial number. That, that would be standard for uh, a typical company. I've bought uh, things that said Intel or Burroughs or other, other companies uh, here, here in Silicon Valley. Um, but this one's interesting. Um, it's not exactly Silicon Valley, but it's pretty close to here. Um, L-R-L, actually it's L period, R period, L period, dash, A period, E period, C period. So L-R-L, A-E-C. So if anybody uh, knows about uh, Berkeley, um, uh, it is a university, but it also has a government lab associated with, with it, which is the Lawrence uh, Radiation Lab. Um, um, and um, Lawrence Livermore also, maybe this actually came from Lawrence Livermore that I think about it. It might not be the Berkeley site. Um, it might actually be the Livermore site. So uh, the Lawrence Radiation Lab and uh, AEC is Atomic Energy Commission. <laughs> so somebody designing nukes uh, used this meter and uh, uh, I did, as soon as I figured out that this was from a nuclear facility, um, I went and got my uh, Geiger counter and tested it. <laughs> Just to make sure it wasn't hot uh, and it tested okay. Um, but I do, not, I do like this tag now. I think it's really, really cool. And um, anyway, it's a joy to have now. I went ahead and Googled... Uh, Lawrence Radiation Laboratories, and uh, yes, it is the Berkeley one. I was right the first time. Uh, so this was a Berkeley unit, and uh, uh, also probably the money was from a grant from the Atomic Energy Commission.